beauty. Special delivery from a special bowler. Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of Pack Passion's exclusive cricket review show called View from the Pavilion. I'm with Dulla Dulla today. Uh, welcome to the show again, Dulla. Hi, thank you very much, Sean, for having me. Um, today's topic of discussion is obviously revolving around Pakistan's selection for the West Indies tour. Um, after the shambles of the Champions Trophy, we were expecting a few new faces, um, and to be fair to the selectors, we've had a few new faces like Harris Sohail and Mohamed Rizwan. But we've also gone back to a few older faces, Shahid Afridi, Umar Akmal are back, uh, Emma Shazad is back. First of all, your overall thoughts on the squads, particularly the, the, the new faces that we've seen. Yeah, overall, there seems to be a bit of a confused thinking, to be honest. Um, as you said, it's good to see the new faces, the Haris Suhails, even Hamad Azam, we've not seen much of him before, Mohammed Rizwan. It's good to see that these guys back, but at the same time, there's a couple of selections which, in my opinion, don't really justify themselves. Mm-hmm. The one that really stood out for me was Suhail Tanvir. Um, you look at his recent performance for Hampshire, he's actually the worst bowler in Hampshire statistically at the moment. Yep. Uh, he had an average of 45 and an economy of 10 runs and over, which is absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, he finds his place in a 2020 squad for Pakistan. Yeah. Um, Afridi, I think, was bound to come back after a poor time Champions Trophy showing. Um, I'm quite a big Afridi fan myself, but having said that, I'm not sure if Afridi, like, warrants his place in the side. However, after the Champions Trophy, I think everyone knew more or less that he will be making a comeback. Shahzad, Emma Shahzad, it's good to see Farhat out of the team. Yep. And anyone who's replacing Farhat, I'm in his favour. But at the same time, Shahzad hasn't done anything phenomenal in the past, but that doesn't mean he can't do so in the future. And I'm hoping that he can perform, put in some good performances for Pakistan in the Caribbean. How about yourself? What do you think about this team? I was generally quite happy with it. I was, I thought it was more balanced. Um, it had a bit more aggression compared to the Champions Trophy squad. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I'm, I'm same as you. I don't see... You know, much justification for someone like Tyler Freely straight away, but we knew that he was going to come back. Um, hopefully, his batting and bowling can both click, and if it does, obviously, then it's a great selection. Um, in particular, I'm glad to see Umar Akmal back. Um, he's a batsman who I think we really needed in the Champions Trophy. Everybody was too similar um, in the Champions Trophy, the batting especially. Yeah, there was yeah. no one that there was no one that really went out and, and attacked um, until and apart from possibly Kamar Akmal in the in the India game. Um, so I like, I'm glad to see Umar Akmal there. Um, one thing that I wanted to just really think about is we've got a few new faces, Harris Sohail here, Mohamed Rizwan. Do you think they'll get into the playing eleven? Because we've seen in the past a lot of players get picked and they they you know carry the drinks out and they never get a game. We've already been told that Mohamed Rizwan is unlikely to play because Umar Akmal's going to have the gloves. Do you think these new names are going to get a chance to play? Well, that's the thing. It's quite disappointing because I'd be extremely surprised if I got if we got to see Hamad Azam, um, Harris Sohail, Zulfikar Babur, any of these players actually getting a game. Um, Hamad Azam has been around the squad in the past, but he just seems to be on waterboy duties. Yeah. Um, and Harris Sohail, I'm not exactly sure if Harris Sohail will get a game. They might look to experiment with new batsmen after the poor performance by the batsmen in the Champions Trophy. Um, however, I'm not sure, having said that, that Harris Sohail will get a game, especially with, as you said, Murak will be back in the squad. Yeah. Um, they'll obviously prefer to go with him. Um, I'm glad to see them take Mohamed Rizwan. It's good to have a young wicket keeper, but at the same time, it makes no sense to take him if they're not going to play him. Yeah. Uh, they've already said they're not going to play him, so it's a bit of a weird selection there as well. Exactly. But, yeah, it's a bit of a... Uh, that's the sad part of it, that yes, we have got the new faces, but it's unlikely to see them play. Um, yeah. Do you think it's... Sorry, yeah. Do you think it's right that, that Omar Akmal has been given given the gloves? I mean, in terms of his own development as a batsman, do you think that was the right decision? I think so, yeah. I, I'm more than happy with Umar Akmal keeping wicket, particularly in the shorter formats. So one-day cricket, 2020, I think definitely he should be keeping wickets. We've got other other countries around the world who've got batsmen who can keep wickets, such as Dhoni, A.B. De Villiers, and McCullum can do it for New Zealand if need be. Um, I think it's needed. In today's day and age, it's needed that you have an established batsman who can keep wickets. I think Gilchrist was the one who really set that trend in the late 90s. Yeah. And ever since then, I think countries have fallen and you need that. And in that sense, I think, yes, Omar Akmal should be able to keep wickets and focus on his batting. I think the excuse that because he's keeping, he can't focus on his batting, I think that's a lame excuse. I think you should be able to do that. Yeah. Um, Mohamed Zawan is going, um, but he's got, he's got a first class average of 44, I think, yeah. which is quite impressive. But Sir Faz Ahmed, who went before as a keeper, he had a first class average of 40 as well. Mm-hmm. But he ended up averaging only 19 in 23 one-day games and 11 in four test matches. So that yeah. average doesn't really mean much. So how sure. about yourself? Do you think you're happy with Dumbrak Moore keeping wickets? Um, I don't think... I think he can do a job. I think he can bat and keep, you know, 
you know, I don't think it'll affect his batting that much. What I have an issue with is having a part-time keeper. Um, as he is at the moment, obviously he may improve, but as he is right now, he is a part-time keeper. And when you've got a spin bowling attack that's as good as ours, you know, Shai the Free, the Sayyid Jamal Muhammad the Fees, these are some of the top spin bowlers in the world, I would like to see someone very competent behind the stumps because I don't want to see you know Ajmal Dustra producing an edge and then a drop catch behind the stumps yeah. um, I just don't see the point I was having you know say Ajmal should be backed up by a very very good keeper he's the best bowler in the world possibly um, that's what I was thinking I, was, I would like to see a specialist keeper just for that for that reason really yeah um, just moving on are there any players that aren't in the squad that you would have liked to have seen there was one one name that I, I mentioned a few times was Reza Hassan we, yeah. we saw him in the 2020 World Cup he did very very well but he seems to be a bit out of favour Zulfikar Barber who we haven't actually seen yet um, seems to be ahead of him in the pecking order yeah I would agree Reza Hassan is the only one that I could actually think of that wasn't there and I have no idea why he's not there ever since the 2020 World Cup he performed really well in the 2020 World Cup I still remember his opening spell against South Africa he did phenomenally against the likes of Amla and, and Jacques Callis, I believe, there. Um, and he's done a great job whenever he's been given the chance, but I have no idea why they're persistent to go with the 34-year-old Zulfikar Babur rather than the younger Hassan Raza, which would make much more sense. If you're going to have a player on tour and not giving him a game, it makes sense for it to be Hassan Raza. Yes, um, right. At least him being around the squad will give him some experience, give him, he can learn from the senior players. That makes much more sense for down the line because Ajmal doesn't have much left in him. He's already quite far along. Um, he'll be retired in a couple of years' time. Yeah. So, he probably he probably retired at the same time as Ofka Babur, so it makes sense to have Raza Hassan there, who's ready to take over the ranks, and he can learn from Ajmal why he's got this opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Um, are there any other faces that you perhaps would have would have liked to have seen? Perhaps Yunus Khan. Some people mentioned. <laughs> nah, I like Yunus Khan, but I think he's just desk cricketer now. He he, he can't really. I don't think he's got much to offer in the shorter format. Uh, but yeah, I think apart from Hassan, apart from Raza Hassan, sorry, not Hassan Raza, that's the wrong one. <laughs> um, yeah, apart from Raza Hassan, um, I can't really think of many that I would, I would like to see in the team. Now, as far as Yunus Khan's concerned, I probably wouldn't pick Yunus Khan enough for a one day and a T20 series. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I think I'm with you on that one. Um, so I think the general consensus is that, you know, we're fairly happy with the, the squads that have been picked. Do you think that this squad, uh, both squads, will win in the West Indies? I think they could win, but, and they should, I don't know if I go as far as saying they should win, but I think they should put up a very really good fight. Um, it's, it's relatively short series, um, yeah. so they won't last for long, so basically we have played well on the day. Um, especially in the 23 series, only two matches, yeah. so that's like six hours of cricket. Um, if you play well in the six hours of cricket, you're, you're winning, if not, then you're out of the way. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, West Indies have some phenomenal players. We've seen them in the last year or so in the 2020 World Cup and whatnot, and we've got the likes of Gail and Sammy and Samuels and Pollard. They've got some great players who've got just the ability to turn the game around. We saw in the Champions Trophy. Um, but the Champions Trophy game, I believe, set this series up very well. That Champions Trophy thriller that was at the Oval, yeah. that set this game up very well. This whole series up very well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good series. Yeah. As far as if Pakistan should be able to win, uh, I'll put my neck on the line and say that I think Pakistan should be able to pull off a 3-2 win. And in the yeah. T20, I can expect seeing a 1-1. What about yourself? What do you think? Um, I, I fancy Pakistan to win. I, I don't know why. I think that, as I say, I think the squad's it's just about the right sort of squad and I think that if they pick the right playing 11 which I think is quite a big thing if they pick the right playing 11 I think that they'll uh, they should win this pretty comfortably um, I think uh, the poll on our home page at the moment suggests that most people think that we'll win the ODIs 3-2 so I think I'll, I'll go with that Yeah. Uh, just moving on to our final point um, we're seeing England and Australia they started uh, the first of 10 test matches today uh, which they'll be playing 5 here 5 in Australia Whereas other teams around the world, including Pakistan, seem to be playing less and less Test cricket. Uh, the West Indies tour initially had Test matches, and uh, you know they've been cut. Do you think that Pakistan, especially, need to focus more on Tests, or should we just think right? ODIs and T20s are more popular. Let's just keep playing them. No, nah, definitely. I think we need Test match cricket, um, especially with the Test Championship coming into effect soon. It keeps getting postponed, but it will happen sooner or later. Mm-hmm. That's one of my biggest concerns with the Test Championship. Um, if you, the rankings are a bit of a joke, so, you, so basing the whole thing on rankings to see who plays the semi-final and final, that would be a bit of a long shot. Yeah. And I don't think many people would be happy with that. But then at the same time, if you're going to have any sort of point system, you need everyone to play the same number of test matches, which yeah. I can't see that happening. Um, in general, I think Pakistan should be playing more test matches. But at the same time, having said that, I don't think it's a big deal if we don't play test matches on one particular tour because we played test matches earlier against South Africa. 
We're going to be playing test matches later on this year against South Africa and Sri Lanka in the UAE. Yes. So it's not like we don't have any test cricket this year. We've been playing a bit of test cricket this year. And I can see why they're not playing any test cricket on this tour. Um, in the Caribbean, you're not going to get any crowds in for the test match cricket. So you might as well go for the one day and the T20s. We're expected to draw the money. It's just a quick fire series. It's not, it's not like a full fledged tour by any means. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think Pakistan should focus on test cricket. But at the same time, I don't think there's any harm with like a series now and then of just one day in 2020. Uh, what's your opinion on that? I think that that we should be playing more and more test matches, to be honest. I think we produce the best players by playing test matches. Um, obviously, there's more money in the shorter formats, but I think that the test matches produces the best players, likes of Yunus Khan, etc. These are the quality batsmen. They are the ones who are produced by playing test match cricket. But at the end of the day, whatever, whatever works at the moment, I agree with you that it's a, it's a, it's a short series against the West Indies, and it, and it may actually... You know, draw more people to it. The fact that it's just a few ODIs and T20s. So, I think on this occasion it's fair enough, but we need to think about making sure that we don't, you know, get to the stage of someone like Sri Lanka and West Indies actually who are, seem to be just completely getting rid of Test matches. Yeah. So I hope hope we don't go down that route, but let's no. find the right balance. Um, but that's all for this week. Uh, thank you for your time, Tulha. Um, and I hope uh, all our viewers join us again for the next episode of Pack Passions View from the Pavilion. Yeah.